Still the breakfast and plus TV Africa. We're looking at the report card and uh, the 2023 projections of President Muhammad Buhari. Uh, we have Zaka Bala joining us this morning, a public affairs analyst from Kaduna. Bala, it's good to have you join us. Uh, compliment of the season. Happy New Year, to be precise. Thank you. I mean, let's let's delve into the conversation. Uh, we remember that in 2015, there were several campaign promises. This administration would definitely come to an end where there will be a transition or transfer, you know, of government to another. May 29th will be that particular date. But, you know, the president in his New Year speech has made, um, you know, a lot of statement and some has listed some of his achievements and also mentioned for the remaining days just to end when his administration or his tenure uh, he's also listed what he hopes to achieve but before we delve into the crux of the matter we know that there are several issues that several campaign promises but on which the president came on board the issue of economy security and of course, uh, corruption was very, very, you know, outstanding. I'd like to share your thoughts on the performance of this administration, especially on the heels of how they came on board. Uh, well, uh, thank you for that uh, excellent question. Uh, and uh, I want to start by congratulating uh, Nigerians uh, across the globe and uh, the lovers and friends of uh, Nigeria across the globe. Uh, if we have to analyze uh, the current uh, political dispensation and uh, the stewardship uh, based on uh, the last four years or the last eight years of, uh, of uh, this uh, current uh, political dispensation, uh, to be honest, uh, it depends on who you are talking to, and uh, it depends on uh, the person's affiliation. Uh, if you're talking to a politician, the first thing you will need to find out is, uh, is that politician in an opposition party or in a particular party or is a part of the ruling party? That, to some extent, will play a role in the kind of response you're going to get. If you talk to somebody who is in academics, uh, you know, and you talk about education, you're likely to get a different uh, uh, response. If you talk to somebody who is probably in the southeastern parts of Nigeria or in the northeastern parts of Nigeria or in the northwestern parts of Nigeria, you are likely to get a, a different uh, response uh, when you talk about uh, uh, security. Then when you talk about the economy generally, nearly all of us have our respective answers uh, because we know what happened and uh, what is still happening. And towards the twilight of uh, last year, when uh, presidential primaries uh, were carried out, you know, and uh, presidential flag bearers came up and the kind of exchanges that we were seeing up till the end of uh, December uh, 2022, you're likely to get uh, different answers. So personally, in my capacity as a loyal Nigerian and as a public affairs analyst, and as somebody who has some good knowledge of the Nigerian economy and my practical concerns and certain things that happened uh, and one way or the other affected me positively or negatively. Uh, for me, uh, the only thing uh, the, the current uh, government or the outgoing government has achieved is that uh, we are still together as one country called Nigeria. Nigeria has not uh, balkanized or has not been balkanized. Uh, somehow, somewhere, we were able to manage together and uh, we are now in the year, you can say, the year of election, which is 2023, and the year in which we are going to have a new set of uh, political leaders. But uh, if one is to award marks, I can only appreciate and award marks to this uh, outgoing government 
or this police. Not, I'm not saying that uh, the government may not still produce the next uh, set of leaders. I'm not saying the, 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 the something will happen, but I'm only happy that one thing that I got from this government and we wait to see is the promise by the leader of the current government or our leader, uh, Mr. President, that we are going to have a credible election. The promise that we will have a free, fair, and credible election. Um, that continuous Zaka, uh, ringing of bell makes me happy. But as far as Bala, the indices of Bala, uh, Bala, let's, security let's, are not... Yes, I, I like us to stay with that because if you look at the report sheet or the report card, if you want to say of the achievement that has been listed as part of, uh, you know, the new year message is a lot, is encompassing. I mean, the list is almost endless. I have, you know, this document in front of me right here. But I'm asking you, looking at the promises that this government came on, it was based on three issues economy, security, and corruption. How would you rate this government? Well, if I'm to rate this government, uh, on economy, uh, the government personally has done uh, below average, personally to me, and I have my reasons. Like you said, the, 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 the achievement the government listed is endless. And we too, if we want to give our reasons for rating, we are likely to have our endless reasons. So for me, on the economy, uh, I, I will rate them below average. Then uh, on the security, uh, I will give them uh, 50%. Then uh, on corruption, uh, until late Last year, into 20, in, in 2022, late 2022, it was below average. But I've seen signs that uh, they have come up to almost 50%. Well, um, let's begin to, you know, look at, we want to, uh, it's in comparison now, uh, the promises, campaign promises, and the achievement has been listed. So uh, during the campaign, I mean, there were promises that were made, and the level of fulfillment is a question because the analysis, I mean, there should be some correlation. That's what should be expected. Now, once upon a time, when this government had, you know, campaigned, whether from 2015 or about 2019, the, one of the, you know, the promises of the campaign is that there will be a ban on government officials from going abroad for medical treatment, right? But that's not been listed in its achievement. Uh, at the end of the day, because you don't want to count how many times you've had different persons, including the president, seeking medical attention. There's also the issue of state and community policing, the issue of state policing, uh, w which we're still grappling with. We, I mean, we're still here now <laughs> with uh, the federal government controlling the security architecture, especially the police. Uh, the issue of declaration of assets and liabilities. First, I'd like to ask you, why is, it there, why, why is there a discrepancy, there's a disconnect with the campaign promises and the achievement that's been stated? Why is that? There should be a correlation. Well, you know, I, I, you asked me to be definite, and I told you that uh, on the economy, the government has performed below average. And once you say below average, definitely you are not giving. You, you mean the person uh, didn't get a pass mark on the, the the security? I told you personally to me, it's fifty percent, and on corruption, fifty uh, percent. And let me take you straight away on the economy. As far as I am concerned, the disposable income of Nigerians has, I mean, uh, has been eroded, and I stand to be challenged by anybody. As I speak to you now, the minimum wage, monthly minimum wage of a Nigerian is supposed to be 30,000 Nigerian Naira. And in some states, it's not even up to 30,000 Nigerian Naira. It's about 18,000 Nigerian Naira. And 30,000 Nigerian Naira today cannot buy a bag of rice. A single bag of rice is more than the minimum wage of an average Nigerian today. As far as I'm concerned, personally on the economy, the minimum wage of a Nigerian, which is 30,000 Nigerian Naira, cannot buy a 50-liter jerry can of diesel. 
Any country you go to where the minimum wage there cannot buy just a bag of rice, only a bag of rice. It tells you everything about that economy as far as, as I'm concerned. Then when you look at education, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, what has happened, especially when you look at ASU, to me, it's a practical destruction of uh, institutions. You see, personally to me, if, if in a situation where some people, not personally, directly either the president, where, where some lieutenant of a, a leader decides to deliberately break down some institutions or break some institution that can stand up and challenge government for the better good of that country. It, 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 you, can't, you can't comment such government. Personally to me, somehow, somewhere, ASU was, was forcefully broken down and it's not good for the future of Nigeria. Those who achieved it now, probably to make the president happy, they will think they are doing something good. But they, are, they have destroyed that, that institution, and it's no good. Look at the health. At the point also, some, some people, lieutenants of the president that they were supposed to be in charge of activities that had to do with health, struggled, struggled to see how they were going to destroy the Nigerian Medical Association too. They also struggled and wanted to fight and destroy Nigerian Bar Association. So when you look at it like that, Breaking and destroying institutions, it may look good to those, those people starting with the responsibility, but it has a negative effect on, on, on the country. So by the time you keep looking, looking, you analyze Bala, like that, Bala, nobody will tell you that people Bala, are so happy. We, so we have time to, you know, look at, uh, we won't be able to go through the entire achievement that's been least that. Uh, to look at it critically, but let's run through some of them. Now, you know, in the statement, the president had released, or the presidency had talked about several achievements, and one of them is in infrastructure. There's credit being given to the fact that the presidential, uh, you know, the president or the presidency had approved in 2020 the establishment of the Infra Corp. Uh, PLC, that's a world-class infrastructure development vehicle solely focused on Nigeria with combined debt and equity takeoff capital of 15 million or 15 trillion naira and managed by an independent infrastructure fund manager. That's one. One of the achievements is listed by this president or this administration. Second is establishment in of the 2020 of the Presidential Infrastructure Development Fund, that's the PIDF, with more than $1 billion in funding so far. Another is the Nigerian Sovereign Investment Authority that's seen the total additional inflows from government around uh, you know, two billion US dollar under Buhari's administration since your regional one billion dollar, which had uh, the fund uh, kicked off in 2012. There's also another achievement that's been stated by the presidency of this administration: the launch of the Nigerian Innovation Fund by the NSIA to address investment opportunity in domestic technology sector. That's data networking data centers and software, agri-tech and biotech, among others. I'd like you to share your thoughts on this achievement. Okay, uh, let me answer. You know, there is what we call paper achievement and practical achievement. So when you talk about leaders, leaders are people that we have collectively handed over our economic, political, and social destinies for them to manage for us in national interest. So whenever they are talking about their achievement, they can say what they have on paper and what they think they have achieved. But we have the right to say what we have seen practically. The first one is this. Just late last year, we were told that, and which I believe because I'm also a Nigerian, about 133 million Nigerians were suffering from multidimensional poverty. That was, that was, it's, it's all over. Even the, the, the statistical the, the, the data and record of Nigeria has shown that. So if Nigerians were so, about 133 million Nigerians were, were suffering from multidimensional poverty, 
that tells you that all the things that they were talking in relation to to poverty alleviation all those achievements were practically on paper we were not seeing them on the ground because i'm also in nigeria as far as I say I'm concerned in Nigeria, look at the roads. When you talk about infrastructure, there are no roads in Nigeria. And that contributed to the cost of high transport fare in Nigeria. We're not talking about airways now. We're talking about road transportation. Between Lagos and, and uh, the northern part of Nigeria, like Kaduna and the rest, the minimum you are now, what is uh, to pay now is about 25,000 Nigerian Naira which is almost uh, getting close to the minimum wage of Nigerians. But before now, with 10,000 Naira, 8,000 Naira, somebody can leave Lagos and get to Kaduna or Kano. So anybody who is talking about, about, about roads and infrastructure, I mean, we know that they are talking about it on paper. Then when you talk about innovation funds, you are talking about this, this, this. What has been the innovation? All the creativity of Nigerian youth that we have seen, especially those who became celebrities, is personal creativity. There is even no electricity as we speak. And the cost of petrol or diesel to run generator is very high and prohibitive. So what innovation has been introduced? If all our institutions have been suffering, our lecturers in higher institutions have not been paid, in what way have they been able to improve creativity or innovation? And when you talk about sovereign investment, from all the sovereign investment, we had how Nigeria was borrowing, borrowing, borrowing. At a point, our debt was ballooning to the point where even international creditors were warning Nigeria. Everybody knew that the, 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 the debt was ballooning Bala. beyond control. Bala. So personally, I didn't see anything on the ground. So, so I mean, let's, let's uh, you know, look at another i mean this is quickly because we're being uh, prompted to you know wrap up this at this point but you have said that there's nothing to look at you know in terms of infrastructure some of the achievement has been listed by the presidency how about uh, real in terms of real was you looking at infrastructure now uh, you know the presidency had listed the 156 kilometer legacy but on standard real which is close to completion, uh, the 327 kilometer worry standard rail, which is completed and commissioned. The three years after construction had started, Abuja light rail completed in, you know, 2018. The groundbreaking done for the construction of Kanu, uh, the Marida standard rail and revamp of uh, the Potakot, uh, you know, rail as well. All of this, uh, financing negotiations ongoing for Ibadan, Kanu, a real project. What do you make well, of this? I mean, I this are, these are some of the achievements. This is in terms of, uh, you know, infrastructure. You also have for roads now, uh, Presidential Infrastructure Development Fund, investment over a billion dollar in three flagship projects, Lagos Ibadan Expressway, Second Niger Bridge, Abuja Kaduna, Zaria, Kanu Expressway. You also have Executive Order 7, mobilizing private investment into development of key roads and bridges like uh, that in River State and uh, Papa Osho di Woshoki Ojota in Lagos. Uh, some of these projects have been mentioned. Are you saying that this is still also on paper? See, you, 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 unfortunately, uh, you are talking to somebody who, who grew up in the northern part of the country, in Maiduguri, I school in Maiduguri, then I was staying in Sokoto. I, I then had my uh, university and tertiary education in Port Harcourt, and I know Port Harcourt very well. You're talking about somebody who currently lives in, in Lagos and knows Nigeria everywhere. These things you are talking are on paper. The key thing the president to me has achieved is his solid promise that he will confirm and make sure we get a free, fair, and credible election. If he gets that for us, then Nigeria will get itself back on the right track. And it is our hope that we are going to get a credible set of uh, leaders this time around. And most importantly, I have even this, this, this charge to journalists. Be very strict are on you, your question. 
press so, to the so, point so and point the them to Niger make sure bridge? we get the right leaders. I mean, what about the second Niger bridge? Are you saying that you know all of this second is still Niger, all... Look, I I know I know Asaba, I know Onicha. The plan about second Niger bridge has been there for ages. It's only delayed and they were completed. Even before the president so was born, or you were born, or I was born, was, was there no Lagos Ibadan Way road? Roads were, were spoiled and were repaired. East West Road in Port Harcourt, with all the carriage and haulage of goods to the oil fields, East West Road has been there since I was in Port Harcourt in 1983. And we're talking about 2023 now, 40 years. It just spoiled, it just repaired. So when you come and you try to repair something that gets spoiled, I mean, there is nothing unique about it. We're talking about the reason why you, are, you were asked as leaders to lead a country for eight years. So when you patch a road, the road existed even before you were born. But what is, what is happening to academics today? What is happening to, to health? What is happening to security? What is happening to the minimum wage? What is happening to, to the cost of our petrol, diesel, and aviation? Fuel. Those are the things we are talking. How is the image of Nigeria on the international pedestal? Look at the rate at which medical doctors, nurses, and young Nigerians are running away. If the economy were to be good, if all those infrastructures were to be on ground, are we going to be having Nigerians immigrating? and being humiliated in foreign countries, let's be very, very practical. We are not talking about paper economy here. We are talking about practical economy. And that's why I just personally want to give it to the president, but I will finally give it to him if he ensures fair, free, and credible election as he has been promising. For me, that is what I have been happy with him about, that promise. And I pray that God will give him the enablement to achieve it. But these new tenants have just been banding, banding, paper, economy achievements, not practical achievement on the ground. Okay, Bala, uh, we have to go. There's, there's so much to talk about, but I hope that this is, you know, just the first part of it. Um, I mean, these are the achievements that the presidency and the president has said that they had achieved. So uh, it's not like I'm cooking up all of the stories. Uh, but we'll no, I totally agree with you, but we are ready to discuss. But every time we discuss, we will listen to their paper achievement and we will tell them about the practical achievement because we are on ground. I'm not outside Nigeria. Katuna is part of northern, I mean, northern Nigeria, but it's part of Nigeria and I'm within Nigeria. Okay. Uh, Zach Abala, we have to go now and we'll definitely have you some other time to continue this conversation. Thank you so much for being part of the breakfast on the second day in January 2023. Thank you. And that's the size of it. We'll take a break. When we return, we'll continue uh, with more interesting conversation. Please stay with us.